Simba. This is Simba. Unfortunately, Simba's guardian, uh, his primary guardian, one of his primary guardians, I guess I should say, mm -hmm. lives across the country. We're in uh, basically almost Mar Vista, uh, East Venice. Um, and basically, one of the problems that I've been called in to work on is Simba's growling at people. Now, I frequently have people that will tell me that they correct their dog or they don't want their dog to growl. Now, a growl is not aggression, and it's very important we understand that it's not aggression. One of the most dangerous things you can do is teach your dog not to growl, because a growl is a way of communicating you're maybe uncomfortable, I'm warning you, I'm, I dislike what you're doing. We want the dog to communicate these things to us. If it doesn't, Simba, sit, sit. If it doesn't, okay, I won't growl, I'll just go straight to a bite. And that's something we absolutely cannot have. So a growl should be an indicator that our dog is not comfortable with the situation. If a dog growls, we need to identify what's going on and we need to be the one who is taking measures so the dog doesn't think he has to protect himself, he can count on the humans to protect him. So if somebody's approaching, the dog growls, well, how is the person approaching? Maybe the dog feels insecure and doesn't know who the person is. Maybe the dog feels threatened because the person walks in straight at him. This is confrontational to a dog. This is approachable to a dog. If you see two dogs approach each other, they don't typically approach face to face. They go to each other's side and they do like a circle and they're licking each other's crotches and sniffing each other's rear ends. Dogs should meet by scent. So one of the things that you can do is he's a very big dog. I'm sure he's intimidating to a lot of people. What we could do is actually arrange, put him in a position to succeed. Maybe you arrange to have friends, people that he knows at a park. So we walk in the park and we have him on a leash and then everybody we meet, when the person comes up to Simba, we hand, the person already has a treat. Simba, here. So we would have the person perpendicular. So the dog's on their side and they would reach over like this. Simba, come here, come here. And go like this to put him in a sit. And once he sits, we let him lower it and take it off our hand and we say the word sit. And then the person, the dog gets a treat. The person is sideways so the dog doesn't feel conf uh, confrontational. And then we walk to the next person and the next person is Simba, sit. Now I pet under the chin if he's not comfortable. This is why I would do it with friends or people he knows. So if you go around and every 15 feet he runs into a new friend, the person puts him into a sit and gives him a treat after a while, Simba will look like, hey, if I just walk up next to a human and I sit down next to him, they're going to give me a treat. So instead of him feeling like the human's coming up and invading my space or he's going to take my territory or doing something I disagree with, I kind of like it when humans approach because they give me treats. So if you have some high value tra treats, these are chicken livers, this is what I like to use, uh, tricky trainer liver flavored, just have a whole pocket full of them everywhere you go. And now let's say that you're worried about Simba getting a treat from somebody else. When Simba comes and you sit down to talk to somebody, sit, Simba, sit, and then you can give the dog a treat while, the per while you're talking to the person. So when a person approaches, maybe the person doesn't directly give Simba a treat, but I get a treat every time we meet a new person. Now, a lot of dogs don't like being touched by people they don't know. Yeah, we're not gonna do, buddy. Okay, so he growled a little bit. He disagreed with my doing that. Now, some dogs will learn to growl because they growl once and then the person backs away and they're like, oh, look what I can do. I can motivate people. This is why I don't practice what's known as dominance theory. Dominance theory is being very physical. It's punishing your dog, it's striking your dog. We don't mean it in an abusive way, but it's still the same thing. Anytime that you're physically uh, interacting with your dog and introduces the concept to the dog and the dog will actually think that it can do that to others that it perceives as having lower rank than the dog does. Now Simba doesn't really have many rules. Because of that, he perceives himself to be equal in authority to his humans, and that means that listening to his humans is optional, just like if we're a couple and we tell our spouse to do something, the spouse decides if they're going to do it because we can't, we do not, they're not our child. We don't have authority to do that. So we want to use positive association and reinforcement. So if we have to, we just go take Simba out to places where we're going to meet a lot of people, and uh, instead of maybe the other person giving me a treat, if we're not feeling comfortable, then we would have... The, the handler give him a treat. If the person wants to do it, we would prefer to have the person sideways to Simba. This is approachable and this makes the dog feel more comfortable. Like I said, face to face is uh, confrontational. And also reaching over the dog's head can also elicit a growl. But again, a growl is a warning. It's the dog's way of saying, I'm uncomfortable. 
the last thing I would ever tell anybody to do is to correct the dog for growling. Now what we can do is identify what was going on that caused the dog to growl in the first place. Oh, maybe the dog doesn't like people reaching over his head. Okay, well we're gonna make sure that we structure it so that that particular thing doesn't happen. Maybe the dog doesn't like a face-to-face -face uh, confrontation. So then we're gonna start leading Simba to the side of people instead of walking directly towards them. So we wanna put the dog in a position to succeed and make him feel comfortable. A lot of dogs that have these sort of problems that I find are actually coming out of a place of fear. And if you're fearful, and somebody is confronting you and forcing you to do something that you're already scared of, that's gonna amplify your reaction. And last thing about being physical with the dog, if your dog is being fit, is growling and pulling, and you're pulling the dog back, you will intensify your dog's reaction because now the dog tries to put forth extra effort to break forth, and that transfers over to its reaction and that can make it more intense. If he's growling at something, what we would want him to do is instead of growling is to get up and move away and feel empowered that I can move away. Now, a lot of people want to take their dog like to a coffee shop and just, you know, hang out and be chill. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great goal to be or to aspire to. But you have to, it's our responsibility to train our dogs how we want them to behave. If we just take our dog to a coffee shop and say behave and we don't tell him what we want him to do, that's on us. That's not on the dog. So if we can, if that's what we want to do, maybe we go to a coffee shop during a time of day when there's nobody there and no foot traffic. And we let him get used to being there without anybody touching him, without any skateboards running by, or any of those things they're gonna to react to. When I have a dog's reactive to something, what I do is I recreate the situation and I turn down the volume. So let's say that you know he's outside of a coffee shop and like he starts growling and skateboarders come by. Well, is it just skateboards? Or maybe there's a semi that's loading and he hears the, the, uh, the uh, uh, what I'm trying to think, uh, them loading up into the semi. They're yeah. loading stuff. That, those, si those, those, you know, it's making a recurring well, sound. And but that's what about people just approaching him when he's laying out there? I think that that's a big fear. Well, he might think, again, I, uh, in this situation, I think he perceives himself to be an authority figure. So if he's an authority figure, no, I don't give you permission to come and approach me. This is my area. Mm -hmm. Whereas if he feels like a follower, oh, I'm going to defer to what my dad says. My dad's not disagreeing and my dad must be comfortable with it because I take my lead from my dad, I'm gonna to listen to what my handler says and not growl at him because my dad is cool with it. Mm -hmm. So maybe we would, what we would do for that situation is I would have maybe go to that coffee shop when there's not a, tr a, a truck loading, there's no bicycles, there's no traffic going by. So he can just get used to being in that place. Then I would maybe have some people come up to him, walk up towards him and stop about 10 feet away and take a treat and just toss the treat and then continue walking. So the first stage is I don't have to interact with people at all. They just come up and give me a little token of their appreciation and then they walk off. And then another person comes and does that. And another person does that. But nobody's touching me. Nobody's invading my space. Nobody's making me feel intimidated. After we've had 15 or 20 people, then we leave. We come back the next day. Maybe the people take, at first they're throwing it from 10, tree, 10 feet away. And maybe they're now at 9 feet away. And 10 people come by and toss a treat. The next day we go to 8 feet. Now when we go to eight feet, the dog starts growling a little bit. Okay, we push too far too fast. Let's back up and go to eight and a half feet. Those people come up, they toss the treat and they walk on by. Or maybe they toss the treat sideways instead of facing it. So we do that enough repetition. After a while, he's just like, I like it when people approach me because literally the best treats that I ever had fall from the sky. Can we get a parade to come by? I'm hungry, I want some treats. So it's a progressive, gradual process. And then we get to the point where the people can approach this close and give him the treat and walk off. And then what we would do is I would probably have the people approach, be sideways and kneel down. So you're on the lower, the taller you are, the more authoritative you are. So the person is sideways and then lowers themselves and holds the treat out to the side. Simba licks it off their hand and then they get up and walk away. They still don't pet the dog. They don't look at the dog in the eye. So we gradually get to the point where he can have people come up and do that. Then the next stage is we have the people do that, but now we have a skateboarder, but he's across the street. So the distance is far enough where it's not startling for him. And we repeat the whole situation. And the next time we do it, the skateboarder is in the, right in the curb across the street. Each time the skateboarder gets a little bit closer while all these components are happening. Now it seems very tedious, but once we've broken it down into all these individual steps and created a positive association through bully sticks or high value training treats or whatever it is that the dog likes, 
After a while, the dog's like, I have a positive association with this. I don't mind when people approach me when I'm in this coffee shop, in this spot, because good things happen to me. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine lives not too far away from here. His, name, her name is, his daughter's name is Frances. I bring her a little pony every time I visit. She likes me, I think, more than her grandparents <laughs> because I bring her a little pony every time. I'm bribing her, but I'm using positive reinforcement, and she, has, she is just tickled pink whenever I visit. Same sort of thing for him. If every time a person comes up, I get a high-value treat, and they don't try to do anything that's too much for me to handle, and they gradually get closer and closer. If we do it gradual, the dog doesn't even notice that you're getting closer because it's progressive. And then eventually the dog's just like, the tail's wagging, and I'm comfortable, and yeah, come on, come on over, give me a treat. So this is a very long uh, video where I kind of talked about a lot of different things, but it's really uh, the summation is we want to put our dog in a position to succeed by making the situation easy for them to handle and then to add a positive reinforcer to it and then help them practice it until eventually we can have the truck loading, skateboarders going by, traffic coming by, people coming by and sitting down and giving him a treat. And he's done each individual step so he knows how to do it and he's on autopilot. Cool. Yeah, bud. Oh, I'll give you a bully stick for that one. Good job. All right.